Hey, what's up guys? This is Kendall again with another tutorial and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to create really vibrant, beautiful sunsets uh, like this one pictured here. I hate really long intros, so let's get into it. Here's the picture after it is edited and here's the photo before. So as you can see, um, we don't really have any of that pink, any of that orange um, coming into the sunset. It was actually a really beautiful sunset, except um, I shot this really, really dark. Um, which is okay, it's better than overexposing. Um, nothing really here in the foreground uh, is visible yet. I took a few shots from this angle, uh, some of them are better exposed here in the foreground, but then we start to lose detail in our clouds and our sunset and we didn't really want to overexpose that, so I decided to choose uh, this one to edit. I'm going to leave the temperature the same for now. Um, I'm going to bring up the tint a little bit. That's going to give us the little bit of uh, pink that we see. Um, in our sunset. Make it a little bit more pink there. Let's probably put it around, around 8. I'm not going to touch exposure, I'm not going to touch contrast because we're going to work with uh, those more in the wheels below. Highlights, I'm going to bring down I'm gonna bring down a little bit. Um, I just want to get more detail here in the actual sunset. Now I'm going to go to shadows. I usually don't bring up the shadows, but since the foreground is so dark, we kind of have to um, to brighten up the actual subject of the photo here, which is the Subaru WRX. Um, so I actually just threw it up to 100. Usually I don't do that with any settings, um, but in this case, uh, it'll work fine. Let's go down to our whites. Um, probably going to bring this a good amount. Uh, let's see, about 46 right there, and that really just brightens up the clouds. We don't really want to have dark, angry clouds. We want to want it to be a little bit more happy. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna make a little bit of contrast here by bringing down the bringing down the blacks to about about 31. All right, I'm not gonna touch clarity right now. We're gonna actually deal with that uh, a little bit later um, when we get further into the edit. Uh, vibrance I might bring up by 5 and if you don't know how to bring up uh, any of these by 5 just hover over the wheel and hit up and down on the arrow keys and you can go up and down by 5 saturation I'm not going to touch tone curve I'm going to put a little bit of an S curve so basically I'm going to bring up the top of the curve a little bit very very slight my art teacher used to say a little dabble do ya and that's very true in in photography in art in in many things just a tiny little dab will get you there so that's the uh... that's what i want to put in the tone curve just a tiny little s uh... for now i'm going to skip over the uh... saturation we're going to go down to split toning now this is the key um, to creating really amazing, vibrant si uh, sunsets. Um, basically, you can choose the whites or the highlights, and you can change the color of them, and then you can go to your shadows or your darks, and you can change the color of those as well. So since we have white clouds, you can't really tell right now, but they're, they're white, they're just a little bit underexposed right now. Um, we're going to choose a good orange yellowish color and bring up our saturation and immediately you can see a huge difference you can see the uh, the orange coming through the clouds up here um, a little bit of pink and you can kind of change different colors that you want if you want to create like a futuristic scene you can go with like blue or not maybe not blue but like green or something like that um, but for this, I'm just kind of creating like a natural looking sunset. So that's that's probably about good. I might go a little bit more yellow. And then I'm going to bring up the balance. 35, 37. That's about good. Now we're going to come down to our shadows. And I'm going to put a tiny bit, just about 8 just to kind of warm up the darker spots here in the in the in the shot um, you don't want to have um, a really bright vibrant sunset and then see the like the reflection on the car door here 
um, that's going to kind of absorb some of that light by putting a little bit of uh, saturation uh, into that shadow there and also here on the ground. Um, you'll be able to see it a little bit more later. I'm actually not going to touch sharpening um, right now. Noise reduction, I'm actually going to bring up a little bit, maybe about 20, and that's going to get rid of some of the noise that we've created um, from bringing up the shadows, um, especially here like in the car door, you can see it the most. Um, now we're going to get to the more complex side of the edit. Um, we're going to go over here to adjustment brushes. And this is one of the uh, best tools that you can have as a photographer. These are really helpful. So basically what you want to do is select an adjustment brush and then you get this brush tool here. And you can adjust the size and the feather. Usually the feather is pretty good for what we're going to try to do. So I'm just going to leave it. Size you can adjust um, depending on if you're using a mouse or a desktop or a laptop. Um, it's a little bit different, but if you're on a MacBook Pro, you slide two fingers to the right to make it smaller, to the left to make it bigger, and with a mouse, you want to uh, just roll your wheel if you have one, and it'll make it a lot easier. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to press the O key to make it so it's it's visible. So if you hit, if you press O you can see everything that you're touching and it's making it red. That's just so you can see uh, where you're going to be editing the color. I'm actually going to make the brush a little bit bigger. So I just want to get this foreground, the part that's really dark, not the car. We're going to be editing that a little later. And since it's the feather is pretty high, you can kind of like go over. I'm like, I'm touching the sky a little bit here, but it's not that big of a deal. We can come through later and bring it down a little bit. So you kind of just want to make sure everything's even. And then when you're done, click O again, and it's going to revert back to the normal, the normal scene that you had. And I want to lighten up this foreground a little bit. So I'm going to bring up the exposure by about one stop. And already you can see it's making a difference. It's We've got more contrast in our foreground, in our sky. Uh, what I like to do with landscape foregrounds is bring up the clarity. Um, I don't like to just bring up the clarity on my entire uh, photo because it'll make some things look weird. And you don't want to bring up the clarity on your sky. You actually want to do the opposite. Um, so I like bringing up the clarity just here, like on the ground and the the poles right here and the uh, plants um, just to make them kind of come into the photo a little bit more. That's all for that adjustment brush. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and click new and now we have a new adjustment brush and this one we're going to we're going to do on the sky so start brushing hit O and it'll reveal the red so we can see actually where we're brushing. And just going to try and get the whole sky. Usually you try to do a couple different adjustment brushes for different parts of your photo because um, different parts of your photo need different things. Like the sky needs to be softer and more vibrant while the, uh, the foreground, the ground there needs more clarity. So see what I did here is I accidentally uh, went over the other part of my adjustment brush which I don't really want to do. So I'm going to hold Alt and brush over this, and it's just going to erase that red. And that's why you have the red that you press O so you can see where you're actually adjusting. So I'm going to take that out. So I don't want to, I don't want to affect that area. just want to affect my sky. All right, so hit O again. And see how we have these really dark, dark clouds? Um, we don't really want it to be that dark and that intense and scary. Uh, so what we're going to do... Let's bring up the exposure just a little bit, just to kind of make it a little bit more friendly. Uh, I'm going to bring up the warmth. I'm going to bring up the warmth to about 45, 40. Like you, see, you can definitely see that makes it a much more warm sunset. Um, definitely brings out the the vibrancy of it as well. 
Um, warmth is really key when it comes to sunsets and sunrises, obviously. Uh, I'm not gonna mess with the tint anymore because I like I like the orange. Uh, I don't really want it to be any more pink. Now I like to bring up the contrast a bit in the clouds. Sometimes it makes it a little intense, but if we bring down our clarity, it'll definitely soften up uh, those clouds. And I think that makes a nice little look. All right, and now that we're working with uh, our sky, we can throw up our saturation a little bit more. It's all about getting that vibrant sunset right there, bringing out those oranges. You don't want to throw up your saturation too much and make it look fake, but we're trying to get the most realistic looking uh, sunset. Now let's make a new adjustment brush and come over here to the Subaru. And it looks a little dark to me. Let's put press O. It looks a little dark to me, so we're gonna probably try and lighten it up a little bit. Let's see, make this bigger. And press O. And I'm gonna bring up the exposure a little bit. Cause I I feel like the Subaru is the subject in this photo, so definitely want it to be uh, exposed. Might also throw a little bit of clarity into the Subaru. Not as much as we threw on the foreground over here, but maybe about 30. Just kind of make that metallic uh, reflection pop a little bit. Really the most important thing is the adjustment brushes and working with different areas of the photo. Uh, it's not about just saturating your entire photo and making it look uh, super orange, but it's about choosing different areas of the photo and working with them individually. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope you really enjoyed it, and I hope you learned a lot. If you guys would like to see more tutorials, please comment below with what you'd like to see, and I'll try to make it for you. Again, thanks for watching, and enjoy your editing.